Why is shame such a powerful emotion? How does it affect us mentally, physically, emotionally? I'm Nadia Davis. I'm a mom, author, attorney, and kundalini yoga teacher who has experienced public shaming that brought me to my knees. On this podcast, I'm going to tell you how I'm living the work taking shame out of the shadows. I'll give you real life advice and skills to take away with you throughout your day. You'll hear from powerful guests who have overcome trauma and emerged stronger than ever. You too can ban the shame within and around you. Join me. You are not alone. Hi, everyone, and happy holidays. Welcome to Home is Within You, where we drag shame out of the shadows and transform it into power. (laughs) What do I mean by that? Well, today I'm super excited because all these different layers are like merging into this one beautiful concept, beautiful uh, just information and instincts and wisdom to help prepare you for the holidays and just in general, to start diving in to the core beliefs and wounds from childhood that our mind latches onto that really are the basis of our personal shame. And I, you know, was preparing for this, this talk today with Dr. Stephen Polter, who I'm so blown away is partnering with me on this podcast. Um, And looking at his chapter two and the shame factor I look at my notes, you know, I read this some time ago and I'm looking at my notes and I have things highlighted and circled because I, I had no idea when I wrote my memoir, Home is Within You, that I was doing the diving in of these early years and the personal shame beginnings. And I, I'm so elated with the freedom that came with doing that writing that I I just want to like lay it all out for everybody so that you can find the freedom yourself. But we're going to do this slowly. And today I'm going to read an excerpt from the book. And then Dr. Stephen Polter is going to explain how our early years and looking at our personal shame beginnings, these core beliefs of inadequacy, these, these ways that we grew up, are so alive and kicking in our adult life today. And we can't really find freedom and look and invite in that shadow self we talked about in the last episode with him. um, Unless we, we look back at these things and I know it can be scary, but trust me, it is so, so freeing. There is no reason to fear this process. And so To begin, I'm going to refer to a part of um, my memoir, and that is on, um, get my glasses, that is on page 58. The audiobook is now available. I'm just going to, you know, say that when I wrote this part, I was in the part of my childhood where I explained to extremely um, pivotal feelings and scenes that would replay in my head throughout adulthood that kind of, uh, or that did turn into this general fear of abandonment and rejection. Whenever I've mentioned that, um, that this is what I'm talking about. It's, you know, I'm in my little body. I'm hiding in the closet in my room. I bury my arms. I, you know, I bury my head in my arms and I feel safer to be alone and not say a thing. I don't know what to do with this feeling inside me. What is it? What do I call it? Disgusted them, him, the doctor that did inappropriate things to me in his office, my family. I don't know. I can't put words on all the feelings. They're fleeting and they scatter all around. And I can't decipher where and what the truth is. I don't know what it is. And in my five-year-old little body, the fear and aloneness are so potent. I can hear sounds outside me 
and there's a lot of stuff going on, like it, the, there's a feeling of, do they see me? Can they hear me? No, it's better just to hide alone, literally, physically in my closet. I don't know what words to say. I, I don't understand, again, the feeling. So how do you put words on them? It's easier to just not think, feel, or speak up anymore. I don't really know any other way of existence. It's just a place I am in in my body. And that, folks, was literally describing an overall childhood place of existence that was with me my entire life. That separation from true self and other people. Yet, literally, I wrote this being in my little girl's body, connecting to all those feelings. And it is from that basic understanding that all of my shame was born. And so when I read Dr. Stevens' book, chapter two, titled, Your Early Years and Your Personal Shame Beginnings, I was blown away. With the holiday season coming up, it is these core emotional beliefs that are going to come up in all of us. Use them as an opportunity to take note and use this podcast and Dr. Stephen Polter's guidance as we go throughout these next couple of months. And so, Dr., what comes into your mind as I'm describing these feelings? Incredible, because there's something I just, as you're talking, Nadia, and I'm hearing you in the closet covering your head up with your arms. There's a quote in here I say that um, when children, the only place children thrive, the only environment children thrive in growing up is a safe environment. Anything other than a safe environment, children survive. The healthy attachment. Health, it is attachment. And I think before you can have attachment, you have to have a foundation. Okay. And unless there's a foundation of safety, it's very hard to attach. And Correct. what you were saying is that's why the holidays are so loaded because that feeling comes up that the old issues are not feeling safe, even though you may be 36, 46, or 56, or whatever age you mm -hmm. are, they reappear. That's why the holidays, I personally and professionally, um, here it is, children, that's why the holidays are so powerful. A parenting right. shaming fact. Children can only thrive in a safe emotional environment. In any other environment, children only learn how to survive. So right. now as an adult, you come home, you visit, you bring your kids or your, um, see your siblings. Prior to <clears throat> the holidays, you are doing very well. And also you get back in that environment, it feels like you're just surviving. And that's why there's so much conflict. Because we, we regret and you wrote that. the wounded, neglected, and scared parts yes. of your five-year-old self are all buried within you. Yes. And that's where we have to create that safe, calm place. And that is the home within. Right. But when we don't have that on the outside, nor the inside, and we're in that survival mode, you know, as an adult. You know, another thing, along with the survival mode, Nadia, the children irrationally believe and feel that they're the cause of the instability and problems in their family growing up. And that may be up through age 50. You know, people think, well, you, they turn 18, you, you're emancipated. You are on one level, but on another level, we have to emancipate ourselves emotionally, mentally, spiritually. I think what happens, Nadia, during the holidays is so many of us go back home figuratively and literally and all these problems are there on some level if we were good enough we would have fixed it right. if we were good enough they would have gotten resolved now people say oh i don't believe that but you know we're talking about what's behind like in the back of the closet in your mind that's where a lot of this stuff comes so as from little right? ones we blame ourselves yep, absolutely 
Absolutely. And it may not be a literal thought, but there's that overall general. Feeling. And that's feeling. where shame enters. Okay. One of the places shame enters the, your movie. Okay. You know, and so what you and I are talking about now are, are being aware of the triggers. But I, I really think having a successful holiday season is catching the shame. Like, wait a minute. I wish mom and dad were different or my siblings or things were different. I get back in the situation. I feel like I'm 15 again or I'm eight. Right. That's not unusual. The oven is and that blended. anxiety and that yeah. all that stuff comes up and it's really our our little five year five year old little yep. girl and little boy mm-hmm. that all of it's coming up and it's yeah. the same feeling that, that I explained right here. It's this what do I say? I can't explain this like separation. Mm-hmm. This okay. So when all of those things come up. There's comfort in knowing yes. why it's coming up. And so can you explain the developmental part, the, our parents, um, you know, that how unintentionally they project things and it's based. So you said the parent infant relationship is based on the parents understanding right. of their invaluable emotional connection with their child. And how that connection forms the child's inner self, sense of self, and ability to function in the world. So when all these different anxiety feelings come up, let's have compassion for ourselves in our adult bodies. That we are learning to connect with that inner sense of self and ability of the little five-year-old to function in the world. Absolutely. So now I'm just thinking here, we, we come in as children and I always ask uh, my clients, what kind of parenting style growing up did you have? Was it more perfectionistic or chaotic or was it single parenting or more, more of an explosive style or friendship style? I mean, what I mean by a goal, perfectionistic style is nothing's ever good enough. Mm-hmm. And so you many times we feel that we're never good enough. The chaotic okay. style is everything's unpredictable. Uh, nothing matters. I'm not noticed. And that's a chaotic family style. The single parenting style many times is I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Someone please help me. And as a child, you feel that and you're not able to. The explosive style is things are you don't know what's going to happen, but you feel like I can make you happy. Please don't get mad. So the child takes on the explosive style to keep the peace. I can make you happy. And the friendship style, many times, son or daughter feels very responsible for the mom or dad. How they feel. Like it's hard to leave them, hard to individuate. So I those, I'm client, so glad you listed all of those because. Those five. Perfectionistic means I'm not good enough. Chaotic, nothing matters. I'm not seen. Single parent is help my mom or dad out. Explosive style is I can make you happy. And the friendship style is I'm responsible for you. Okay, so all that's in the in the ether, Nadia. Those are the triggers. Yep. The thoughts that'll come up. So if, if our feelings of say say do, the parenting categories, but say the feelings. I'm inadequate. Yeah, the feeling. Uh, I'm never, I never feel good enough. Okay. Number two, nothing matters. I'm not noticed. Number three, I'm overwhelmed. Someone please help my mom or dad. Uh, number four, I can make you happy. Please don't be mad at me. I can make you happy. Uh, and number five, uh, the friendship style is I'm responsible for you. Okay, that's, that's perfect huge. because we can be aware of when yeah. any one of those five come in kind of descriptive thoughts are going to come up during the holidays. Absolutely not. That's the key. You know, holidays in particular because there's more exposure to our family or we're connecting with them more. But many times they but go in dormant. general. Yeah, they're dormant during the year. 
But in the holidays, and holidays can be, don't have to be something you hold your breath to get to January 5th to. Versus and doing, whether there's interaction yeah, with family not, or not. It's still it, going. It, it, right. It's, it's bringing up cast. Right. right. Holidays in general are quote I mean, unquote family I mean, time. What you know, right. whether you're connected with, with them and seeing people or not, it's gonna come up. If you are seeing whether parents, siblings, your own children, partner, ex partner, um, all of this will come up. And not, this is I really like that, um, Nadia. Not I to like scare just... people. This mm-hmm. is to create some preparation so that when these feelings come up, we're aware. I think a lot of people, my experience is that a lot of people, well, I'm not going to see my family or I'm not going to do that. But you've got the Christmas movies, the Christmas songs. All that stuff. It's coming up. I always smile. Like you, however, it's like all roads lead to Rome. Just, you're going to end up in Rome. Just get ready. <laughs> you know? Right, you right. You may start in Lancaster, but you're going to end up in Rome. You know, I always joke. You'll about end that. up there, right? The song yeah. on the radio. Yeah. The, right. You're going. You're going. Right. It's coming. So you kind know. of when we're out and about and we're seeing, mm-hmm. I mean, they just lit the Christmas yep. light here in town and had the snow, and all of a sudden, you know, Christmas is it. here. Let alone Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. And, uh, right. Same thing. Yeah, they lit. Same. They had the tree lighting ceremony, and. Uh, the Hanukkah right. candles. I mean, it doesn't matter where, where where you sit on the spectrum. It's coming. Right. Yeah, no so, one's and what is coming? Your life. Stuff you may have buried. Stuff uh, from the past. Doesn't mean it's bad. Um, present day stuff. It all gets mixed together, Nadia. It's all that shadow self that we avoid. Mm-hmm. That private self. That that the, all the feelings. You know what's fascinating is as a side note, I realized that when we create that safe place within us to recognize these thoughts, these, Mm -hmm. these triggers of emotional, you know, emotional neglect, that when the more that we can recognize them, the more we can be present for others. Correct. Over life. Like, the more emotionally vulnerable mm-hmm. we are with ourselves, the more we show up for others and build trustworthiness. Absolutely. And that's the ultimate goal. But right now in the holidays, um, when you have one of these kind of thought based patterns of the five, he, he laid out mm-hmm. it's no, it's your inner, it's your inner wounded child. That's waiting for you to invite him in. I know men have a hard time. So, excuse me. I don't want to be categorical. I, <laughs> I'm just shaking my head because I hear inner child. You know, I'm always like, you know, like, but I have found when I get guys to really see the little boy inside of them, I don't care how old or how wealthy they are. There's a softness that comes with that. You see these little kids trigger treating like the little two and three year olds. I don't care who you are. It's adorable. You know, I have on the little <laughs> Winnie the Pooh outfits. And I don't care who the guy is. Oh, like, it's adorable. That little person's inside of you. And we forget about him. We forget about her. How adorable they are. And that's why we came up with the shame scale. Because shame is like a cancer. Yes, it could be three cells in your body or can completely consume you. And the intervention is you. You will always be the intervention with can- with emotional cancer, shame. And How, this is- for the holiday season, can yep. we give that inner child the gift of beginning to look them in the eye, beginning to invite them in by, yeah. is it identifying these thoughts and the shame or, you know, how, how do how, I, I have my path where it was finding calm and safety in my body with breath work and kundalini yoga. But let me tell you folks, it's a daily process. Yes. It's a grind. Some days it's not, but it's, no. but it's comforting. It's not, it right. doesn't feel like a burden. I run to do that. So what so do you advise? Even, so yeah. I advise three things today. Uh, 
that I think will really make a difference. One, what's this, what's this sentence in your mind, on your heart? When you think of, when you think of your family, I feel dot, dot, dot. When I think of my family, I feel and finish sense. Your birth family or? Whatever family comes to mind. Okay. I tell people whatever, you're, wherever it takes you. When I think of my family, I feel dot, dot, dot. Okay. That, how you finish that sentence is a good indicator where your shame factor either starts or stops. Okay. It's like the off-ramp or the on-ramp. And for many people, it's the on-ramp because they're not aware of it. I've had people say, when I think of my family, I feel terrible. That's honest. And underneath the terrible is a lot of pain. And on top of terrible is a lot of anger. But when we okay. cut through it, it, what it is, not it's a very different situation. When I think of my mom, I feel dot, dot, dot. Or I th- when I think of my dad, dot, dot, dot. Or my siblings. Who we, ever you spend the holidays with, I tell you, I tell my clients, ask that question. It's going to help you so you don't get blindsided. Or if you're not spending it with them. Oh, better said. Absolutely. Ask that question. You know, because what those do of I us feel? That are blessed to have Parents. that connection with our families. Um, and then those that aren't, um, it's the same question. Nadia, that's a great. When I think of my parents or my family during the holidays, I think, excuse me, I feel dot, dot, dot. Right. And that, Nadia, that starts, that opens the door to and yes. how we may feel about ourselves. Okay. Because that, it's all, it all goes full circle. You know, because uh, the healing circle is the reason why it's not a healing square or a healing line, it's healing circle. You can you where you start many times is where you end up in a good way. And so as a starting point, when we ask <clears throat> ourselves that question, and then we write a few of the feelings down. Yes. What what is that then saying? You mentioned um, the shame scale, the same You're- the shame factor, and it could be, you know, from what to what. And you know, what do I we think do with that? When we start talking about it and make it conscious, and and this could be journaling, talking to your therapist, talking to a friend, shame cannot survive when it's exposed. It just can't. It just, it, it dies. It literally, it's, yes. <laughs> it's a vampire. Turn on the lights and it dissipates. You know, it just can't survive. So that is... The key here with, the sh- with not engaging our shame cycle or feeling terrible about ourselves is what do I feel when I think about my mom and dad or what I think, what do I feel going over to so-and-so's house Christmas Eve or what I feel not seeing my kids or dropping them off on Christmas Eve or uh, not having children, all of it. And or, it know, could be, um, or not being married, or not having a anxiety, party. sadness, yeah. mm-hmm. disappointment. Um, yeah, exactly. I always shame. ask, where does it, where does it enter? Like, where does the, you know, the, the wound enter? For any people, okay. I don't have a partner. I'm not married, or I'm alone. Okay, when I'm alone during the holidays, I feel, and you start walking through it, and it, the shame scale goes from zero to ten what we discussed in the book. Uh, the zero is, there's no emotional issue. Let's you know, put some more feeling words on when, when I think of my family, yeah. I feel alone, abandoned, um, I'm ashamed, um, or I'm are enraged. The, angry, right. Angry, not understood, um, mm-hmm. unseen, um, excited, um, yeah, anxious. I, uh, when I think of my family, 
because many of us are, you know, as, as we get older, our parents may not be with us any longer. Or I, I miss them and I feel sad. And I'm also happy. You know, happy meaning guilty. I'm, I'm at peace. Peace is a good one. Feeling at peace is a good one. You're not going to miss too much by being feeling peaceful. I, okay, of, and I, then I, depending if there yeah. is like anger and a sense of um, loneliness or any of those anxious feelings um, left out, I'm trying to think of other other different scenarios. Um, I'm excited and I'm grateful. Um, yeah. There's uh, some feelings that come up of of uh, anxiety and um, mm -hmm. with kind of the birth family, there's issues that yes. come up with, with, uh, yeah, it's kind of a an anxiety with my own family. It's nothing but joy. Um, but okay. So when, when those things come up, I know with my birth, it definitely mm -hmm. is that shame. And so what is the, the scale? Like, so, what do we do with that? Okay, I, and I want to just do? fill this out. We're asking people to identify, but what do we do with it? I'm going to answer that question. First, people go, well, I don't have any shame. And we've talked about that earlier. Shame yeah. is you feel defective or you've done something wrong. It's an irrational belief about yourself. So when that comes up, you can call it discomfort. Call it whatever you want. It's still what it is. You know, it's still, <clears throat> it's a malaise. And it, right. it takes you out of the moment. And it's fear. Yeah. It's fear. It's a lot of stuff. And yeah. Okay. Is so with that, scale. identifying it, yes. You know, for instance, like, so I don't feel much or I don't feel any emotional issue around something. Like, you're, um, I, I tell people sometimes being ambivalent is not wrong. You know, being, amb and that may be zero. Or number two, you understand the concept, but you don't feel shame. You understand the concept that academically you understand what the word means, but you really don't feel those kind of feelings. Like pretty resolved with your parents or, you know, it is what it is. Not in a, <clears throat> not in a void manner, but just, this is what it is. Doesn't uh, some of determining this though, depend on one's honesty with themselves? Well, you know, that's assumed. Okay. Okay. If you're not going to be honest, you're going to get blindsided. Okay. No, that's a really good point, Nadia. Because if you're not honest <clears throat> and honest <laughs> is being introspective about it. Like, like for instance, I'm not a zero <laughs> for the holiday season, okay? I, I've never met someone who's a zero. Right. I haven't. I've met a lot of eight and nines who have not met a zero. <laughs> and I'm not. My birthday's December 15th. My mom's December 2nd. I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on. You know, you know everyone's got right. stuff in December and November. But I've never met a zero. But it's there. You know, I never two. So we're talking your about shame, your shame, shame scale, scale on a scale from yeah. zero to 10. And this zero may be, is, shame is not your emotional issue. Yep. One, I, one. Okay. And I find this, we're talking about particularly during the holiday season, Nadia. Yes. Okay. I've never thought the holidays be a zero. You know, for people. And number one, you understand the concept. But you don't feel it. Okay. You may be detached. Um, you can't, number two. You occasionally feel shame about certain issues, but the feelings quickly dissipate. Okay. That's not – that's very um, very plausible. And by the way, we're not trying to over-pathologize or diagnose everyone that's having a problem. But certain issues trigger us. You know, and number three, you notice that certain events or experiences trigger these waves of feeling you don't, you don't feel good about yourself or you don't feel safe. You don't feel positive. I call that shame also. Okay. And that's number three on the scale. Number four, it's starting to escalate now. Sometimes you're scared to reveal the truth about yourself or a personal feeling. Now we're starting to get into how kids cover stuff up. Mm -hmm. uh, number five, you, we experience bouts of shame-based reactions and embarrassment. We feel enraged like a fraud at work or with our friends and we're, 
and you're feel you're fearful of being exposed. Now with our family, I mean, Nadia, I mean, I've got a family, I've got clients, I've got buddies I've known since the second grade. And we all have siblings that can say stuff to us about things that happened in 1984, you know, or like, and it just stuff that we've forgotten about it, but makes us feel very exposed. This is fascinating because the, the rage, Oh, I think you feel enraged mm-hmm. and like a fraud at work or with friends and you have, and you are fearful of being exposed. And your family knows your secrets. And you know, they're, you know, the family secrets. Number five, I find not it is a, the steps below it are very mild. Number five is where it escalates. Because the fear of being exposed is. It's funny. Stuff- I determined I was a four. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, we'll I can vacillate after. between a four and whenever north of that. It, number uh, number six. Three, a could, three and two. A three. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And number five. Now, I, about being exposed. Number six is many days before or times before we feel enraged or emotionally panicked up, um, about being discovered as a fraud or being reprimanded or be now, not you and I both know there's no such thing as you can't make me feel anything. But many times we get around our parents. I spoke to a woman yesterday. She's 56. She says, my parents make me feel terrible. I go, they don't. You feel terrible and they trigger that in you. Yeah. And the the interesting thing about this again is there doesn't need to be a specific secret you're hiding. This is simply oh, that's a good point. this overall feeling. Yeah. There's not like, I don't have any secrets. There's a feeling mm. of defectiveness of separation Yes, and, and, and this constant running to stand still of perfectionism or mm-hmm. you don't have any feelings or that's what he's talking about. Certainly. Yes. Some have actually a double life and or fraud. But we're talking no. about this subtle shadow self that no one really knows that we're not allowing vulnerability to to expose because we haven't created a safe place within ourselves to feel all those feelings. So we don't show up with all the feelings. Right. Yeah. Nadia, that is absolutely imperative what you just said, being aware of that. Uh, and number six, many times we have days where it just, it stays with us. There's like this residual, you know, this uh, residual impact. It's how, why the, so many people get, get yeah. sick in January. It's not just because it's the winter because your immune systems run down from being in high stress places because when we're right. uh, high adrenaline, high cortisol, the only thing that breaks it down is our white blood cells, our immune system. I and see. When our immune system's busy breaking that down, that's when we get run down. We get sick, colds, viruses, things like that. And right. That's a whole episode. That's a whole other one. body is carrying this. Yeah. Yes. And number seven, it's difficult not to immediately escalate when being aroused or questioned about a problem. You feel exposed and fearful. You react with intense anger. When being accused or questioned. Bingo. Let's keep going because we're a little short on time. But number yeah. eight. You're told by people you have an anger management problem, an anger problem, and that just escalates it more. You, you, we, with being told you have an anger problem many times, you feel like you're being told you're bad, and that's number eight. And number nine- you engage are, in physical and heated verbal altercations as a means to protect your inner feelings. Okay. Number nine. That, number nine. Your relationships are influenced and shaped by this powerful negative feelings and beliefs, and many times self-defeating uh, shame actions. Wow. It feels like your life is, is emotionally controlled by it. And that's, people say, well, you're, you're too emotional. It feels like you don't know how to regulate your feelings. Or in those moments, we don't know how. Other moments you do, but in those moments, we don't know how. And number 10, and I tell people to think about, it, it feels like your life is consumed with shame-based addictions and behaviors feels like you're incapable of reaching your potential or functioning at your potential. And sometimes at number 10, very common people feel hopeless and they want to kill off those feelings, not necessarily themselves, but kill off those feelings. 
I see that a lot with young children. You'll have an mm-hmm. eight or nine year old come in with their parents and say they want to kill themselves. And it turns out they want to kill off feeling bad. Right. They don't want to kill themselves. They really don't. Right. But they feel so bad about something or themselves. When they feel like they failed. You know, it, whether like kids not getting into colleges they want. Mm-hmm. I, every year I have somebody who gets so distraught, they think their hope, life is hopeless. Life's over. Yeah, it's terrible. In the last 20 years, I've not had someone not say that. And they get through it, but they they realize a bad feeling doesn't mean a bad life. A bad right. moment's not a right. bad life. And shame says it's all of it. If you have a bad moment, you're a bad person, it's a bad life. But it is you. Right. It's you. Right. And so that's why, Nadia, today we're going through this. And I hope this has been really helpful for people. You know, I can say, in, yes. I wrote in 2012, I was I was a nine, that relationships influenced and shaped by your powerful negative feelings, beliefs, and self-defeating shame. And today, it's it's number two. It's like you occasionally feel shame about certain issues, but the feelings quickly dissipate. Two, four, sometimes you are scared to reveal the truth about yourself or a personal feeling. It's mm-hmm. mainly the feelings. Revealing yeah. the feelings or when, you know, last year I reached out um, to an ex in a heavy, heavy shame-based moment of fear. And, Mm -hmm. and why, you know, that was the little girl in me that was reaching out and why I had such a difficult time even identifying that as, as shame deriving. But these are the kinds of things that when we look at those triggers, that core emotional, emotionally wounded little girl and little boy, um, we, the more awareness that there is of this emotionally neglected child, Mm -hmm. um, the more aware we are of these triggers and where we fall and, and you can go down in it by, you know, embracing the feelings. At least that's what helped me. I think part of what you just said and, and for our listeners is that during the holidays, it doesn't need to be perfect. Good enough goes a long way. Yes. Good enough goes a long ways. And that you may get upset with, the past or feel terrible about something. Okay. Uh, your life's in front of you. It's not behind you. And having this feeling. I love that. Good enough. Is good enough. Good enough. We- your life's in front of you. You're good to hit some, we're going to hit some potholes in the road. I do, you do. And the objective is keep going forward. You know, the rear it's view mirror is not enough, your best friend. And we do the best we can. We can. And, and accepting we can that. give ourselves that unconditional yep. love within ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Unconditional love and keeping the shame containable. So when that's we why do, I, we show up fully, authentically, and yes. can really, truly offer others unconditional love. But I love that you said, let's just get through and let's good enough. Yep. Is listening to this and just being aware. Yeah. Well, listen, it will uh, be a wonderful holiday season. It's going to be a great holiday season. With Thank this you, awareness, Nadia. you're giving yourself a gift. Yep. You're doing a great thing. And I wish you and your listeners the very best this holiday season. Okay. Awesome. Happy holidays, everybody. And thank you so much for listening. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. You are not alone. If you are dealing with shame and trauma, please reach out to me through my website, nadia-davis.com. You can get a free ban shame tip sheet and find out about upcoming events. I'd love it if you picked up my book, Home is Within You, wherever books are sold. If you like this podcast, please tell a friend, leave a review, and make sure to follow me on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sending warm hugs.